and welcome folks to episode 35 of the Ministry of Dice podcast. We're a UK-based podcast talking about all things Dice Masters in the United Kingdom. I'm Chris, otherwise known as the True Mr. Six, and with me today I have Andy. Uh, A.K.A. John Matrix. <laughs> little known fact for the listeners, actually. Um, while, while others may have only just discovered random name generation... Andy has clearly been randomly generating names for quite some time now. <laughs> <laughs> and he don't need no algorithm to do it. <laughs> nice little segue. Yeah, clever that, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. England. How are you today? I'm very well. Are you all right? Yes, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm plodding on. Plodding on. I'm very tired. My days have just got longer at work, so I'm knackered. Knackered. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. Poor Mr. Six. Indeed. I've got my cup of tea, though, so it's all right. A little sugary caffeine boost will do me good. Cool. We've got a rip roar of an episode this week, so get yourself prepared. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a belter. You'll you'll not be able to contain yourselves. Last men standing now, mate. I know, right? Yeah. That was yeah. a good last episode of the Double Burst, wasn't it? It was indeed. There was a, there was about two and a half minutes in particular that I thought was a cut above the rest, for sure. Yeah, that was my favourite bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so my, my, little, my true little fact is in relation to non-Dice Masters gaming-related news, but we were talking over IM the other day about Keyforge and its random name generator and the, the controversy <laughs> that that's generated. Yeah, I mean, it seems really, really popular. Uh, Ken Paul was talking about it on the last episode of the Double Burst, and uh, mm. uh, a few of my friends have dipped their toes in. But some, like some of the names that the random generators come up with, I've got Titan Flayer, the Farmer of Racism. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, beautiful. The Emperor that pays for boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. General Bone Rider Colt. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I think he hangs around in a public toilet in um, in a park in the East End. You see, I've met him once. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so no, I've really, I've not got into it or really seen much about it. I've got. It's I'm not certainly interested. No, I'm not particularly interested. Do you think you might give it a go? Uh, I might do. Uh, the art looks a little bit samey. Yeah, well, again, I think it's based on this um, because of this this kind of algorithm that produces the random cards. Because no two decks are supposed to be the same, are they? No. Yeah, I don't really so. get it. I'm not sure. I'm I'm into this idea of you're just playing it out the pat like that necessarily. Yeah, there's a lack of dice involved. Yeah, no dice. But you know, we we always complain <laughs> no about. Dice. <laughs> yeah, we always complain about WizKids quality control, and well. <laughs> <laughs> look, yeah. what, look what's going on there although i hear i hear rumor told that um these decks with the restricted names on them are, are going for a pretty penny on on ebay on the secondary oh. market yeah who, so, to, who wouldn't want to play around with the emperor that pays for boys who indeed who wouldn't who yeah indeed? <laughs> so i'm not concerned i don't think it's gonna steal away anyone from our little dice masters community just yet oh you never know well we'll see we'll see outside of that though mate what have you been up to this last two weeks what have i been up to uh had i uh, met up with the gaming group on this kind of friday just gone uh and played uh some space hulk oh yeah which is very cool. That's a very old cool. school, that man, is it? Unless is there a new edition? Uh, they re-released it, but that was like 2009, oh, 2010. Right. I remember Space Hulk from my teenage years. A few years ago, beautiful models. Mm. Uh, the, the group that I'm playing with refused to play with unpainted models as well. So it was all painted up nicely, which makes a difference for the aesthetic of a game in. Yeah, very good, very good. Just did a bit of that. Big event since our last episode, Gaming versus Cancer. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, well, um, as we mentioned at the time, we we played, we had actually played in the event by the time the episode went out, but we recorded the episode in advance. So this is the episode where we're going to give you guys some coverage from the Gaming versus Cancer event. I heard the guy who won it cheated. Uh, yes, he did. He's got um, a special little pocket sewn on the inside of his of his <laughs> dice bag that he inserts integral dice. He's also mastered what's also known, commonly known as the uh, as the crab claw. The crab claw. Yeah, it's a special technique to do with how I lift dice, drop them in my bag, 
and remove them again. Very good. Yeah. You have to teach me that. Yes, yeah. I'll uh, I'll do an instructional YouTube video for you. <laughs> you also <laughs> talked to me out of playing Ultraman, which I think might have turned the tables somewhat. Uh, yeah, do we talk about that in the segment we've recorded? We've done that thing where everything's all out of sequence, so I forget what we have and haven't covered. Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, I, I had two teams with me when I took them. I had my still competitive Dum Dum team with a few tweaks. The one that I took to uh, UK Nationals this year uh, threw in Jade Giant, which is good on any team. Fared pretty well, but didn't cut the mustard all the way like yours did. If I take my Ultraman team, I think it might have a different story. It's pretty... Sorry, pretty nasty yeah. and in comparison to everyone else who kind of played more fun teams I could have romped home but then I would have looked like a douche well indeed and as we say in the upcoming segment it's not in the spirit of a Ministry of Dice Presents Dice Masters event what else I bought a um, Avengers Marvel trivia quiz alright that's quite fun the questions vary do you want a couple yeah go on ok what is Hawkeye's main weapon uh uh ooh let me contemplate this. Does he use a handgun? No. Um, is it a long black club? About nine inches? <laughs> no. Uh, well, clearly it's a bow and arrow, isn't it? It is a bow and arrow. That was a hard one. <laughs> they get a little bit harder. I've got over which eye does Nick Fury wear his eye patch? Ooh, uh, I don't know. His left eye. That's right. Oh, total 50-50 okay. shot, that was. Yeah. What colour are Dr. Bruce Banner's eyes? Really? Yeah. I don't know, brown. Well, that's right. Is it? Yeah. Well, uh, again, um, complete guess. Total stab in the dark, that one. Well, yeah, that's quite cool. I bought it the other day. I haven't played it with the kids yet. What colour are Captain America's boots? Um, Red. Yep. Yeah. I'm doing pretty good here. In the movies, Iron Man's AI assistant, Jarvis, is an acronym for what? Oh, that one I don't know. Find out next time on the Ministry of Dice. Yeah, you'll have to come back to the next episode to get your answer on that one. Very good. Very good. Cool. Anyway, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Uh, so, non-Dice Masters related, bit of gaming with the Kiddy Winks. So, we've played a little bit of Hey, That's My Fish recently um cool. a bit we went a bit old school with a game called sorry that's uh, oh crikey that that takes me back to like my childhood yeah that is uh yeah that's a really old school one um yeah that's a really really old school one and then a little bit of hive with the good lady her indoors uh she doesn't know it yet it's her birthday coming up and in the boot of the car i have a copy of uh, year one pandemic legacy for her. Wow. Yeah, she's already she's always had her eye on it, so I've I've, I've made the dive, but shh, don't tell her. Uh, in the dice masters space, so again we're going to talk about it in just a moment. It, oh, again, hang on, I'm all confused. Have we talked about ten in ten yet? Um, we've got a segment on it this episode. All right. Well, we're. You, listeners can wait for the segment, but we've been playing around with this 10 in 10 thing that we'll talk about in the segment in just a moment. Uh, <laughs> so that's a few games with yourself. And then down at the FLGS, uh, the gents from Element Games and I, uh, what did we do this week? Oh, we did a Stan Lee Memorial event. So everybody had to have a card from a, a an online list. Uh, one of us dug out for Stan Lee created characters. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was cool. I played a pure X-Men team. With the original Stanley lineup on it, so I had a Beast, a Cyclops, uh, an Iceman, an Angel, uh, a Jean Grey, a Professor X, a Blackbird, and the Xavier School. That sounds cool. Did it yeah, fall well? it did all right. Yeah, although there's, uh, I didn't build it very well because there was lots of weird, like non-synergy stuff going on. So I had a, the Angel that spins dice up, but then I wanted my my Jean Grey, my Marvel Girl, and my Beast on level one. I was like, why have I done that? You know, just silly little things. But it was all thematically on point. Thematically on point. I, I don't feel like the rest of the guys necessarily, or certainly a proportion of the guys, were quite true to the spirit because they just threw one Stan Lee card on and then filled the rest of the team with their usual power gaming stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? 
Yeah. Um, on the on the uh, subject of ten and ten, I'd like to take this moment to say that when we speak about what well, in that segment, I got very excited about two cost bolt songbird cards with Intimidate, uh, which uh, is how it's detailed on uh, the Sidekick app. Mm. However, when I actually opened my pack of Justice Like Lightning, I realised that the card that I just recorded the whole segment about and got very excited about doesn't actually exist. So uh, when you listen to that later, I do apologise, but don't bother listening to me because it's a load of bobbins. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> it's blank. It doesn't have Intimidate on. I'm guessing the guy that does the Psychic app, of which I'm always grateful because I use it loads, uh, but he's uh, made a little boo-boo there. Uh, so ignore that rambling about a load of <laughs> Yeah, although that's just reminded me, one of the other things I did um, this last week, although by the time this episode goes out, I'll have closed it. I, I ran a couple of surveys that some, so we're grateful. Thanks to those who went on Facebook and answered my surveys uh, to help us out with a segment we're planning uh, in the coming weeks. Something exciting, no less. Mm, yeah, absolutely. But we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there so that the segment isn't spoiled. Good chance. Right, and um, who are you then? Oh, who are you? Yeah, okay. I'll drop the little theme tune in now. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Yes, so for those not in the know, who are you? Andy and I like to take a look every episode at our listening stats, pick a location from the top listening locations, um, and ask for a listener in that particular location to get in touch so that we can give them a shout out because we're just utterly fascinated that people all over the world bother to listen to us last episode it was cycloville in the good old us of a but sadly cycloville has let us down and nobody came out of the woodwork from cycloville yeah yeah in fact we're not doing very well on on uh, our who are you's now i'm pretty sure the who are you fails are outweighing the who are you wins Although I've not I've not been keeping a tally, so I've lost track now. But I don't I don't think we're doing all that great. No, um, I'm not sure I, we're doing that great at all. No, I even suggested Andy to Andy we might knock it on the head because for whatever reason I don't know are we unapproachable maybe? Maybe I don't know. Well, double burst used to get loads of people writing in. Double burst? Who are they? Maybe if people listen to us now, then they might write to us. Yeah. Or maybe they just listen to us. They think those guys don't know anything. Yeah. Why would we write to them? They're certainly not going to help us brew a team. <laughs> 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 they're no use to us a former uk national champion and a and a, and a wooden spoon holder nah no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway onwards and upwards let's see if let's see if this week is the week to turn it around so this week's location is vestas gerninge <coughs> in denmark let's say that again vesta skerninge that's how it's spelled i'm certain the pronunciation is wildly inaccurate um that's in denmark so if you're one of our uh listeners investor skerninge i kind of enjoy saying that actually um although when i say um ninja i think a ninja do you mm. I, th- I think of minge yeah i thought you might say that <laughs> i thought you might say that do you think that's a the used word in the u.s possibly not but- it's just, let us know. it's just a mangy cat. <laughs> 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 so get in touch with us. Find us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Ministry of Dice. Uh, t- or tweet me at BritRollerMr6. Or go to the blog, BritRoller6.com. Hit the contact us button and fire me a note. And if you come out the woodwork before we record for our next episode, we'll give you a shout out and hello. Uh, and a lovely mention by name. With my lilting Manchester voice. You sound a bit tired, mate. I am a bit tired. Is it coming through, is it? A little bit. We seem, I think we're both a little bit lethargic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we can kick back now and put our feet up. We ain't got no competition, have we? No competition. <laughs> you want to listen to a Dice Masters podcast, it's us it's or us nothing. Or bust. So yeah. stuck. Yeah, or someone will come out of the woodwork soon enough and fill that gap and then, then we'll be crapping ourselves. <laughs> they were have to do prep again. Do you remember we used to do prep before we started? Yeah, we do prep every episode before we start. No, we don't. No, we don't. I never did prep. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mate, I used to like spend hours like writing stuff. Dude, you can go all the way back to episode one. All the way back to episode I'm certain of this. And, and re-listen. And the amount of times you say to me, haven't you prepared? And I'll go, <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. And then the whole segment will just fall apart. 
<laughs> because I'm blagging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. So, um, should we talk about what's coming up in the episode? I think we could do, I suppose. I think we've already kind of mentioned it, though, haven't we? So, we've got a segment about the 10 in 10, or 10 by 10, yeah. or 10 of 10. Or 10, 10. 10, 10. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> nice, nice, nice touch. Did you like that? Yeah, I did like that, actually. It made me, made me lol. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's our new thing, because we did Golden Global Escalation. Um, we've done that. So we moved on to do something else, like, and 10 in 10 is the new hotness, because we said so, isn't it? In it, yeah. So uh, we'll explain why we've why we're taking a look at that in the segment. We've got that coming up, and then we've got some uh, a bit of a chat about the gaming versus cancer event that we sponsored and partook in. Partook in, took, you know what I mean, with some live audio that was captured on the day, also in that one. So enjoy that. And then, would you believe, Andy, we've we've Ooh. had some more listener correspondence as well. So I'll share that with you in a bit. Oh, happy days! I'll say with the gaming versus cancer audio, um, uh, if you listen very carefully, you might hear Matt Haley. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah or not up. or not so carefully as the case may be <laughs> hi matt hi matt cool so that's what's coming up on this episode yes absolutely uh, but uh, before we go any further we're just going to move into a very quick community focus oh the merch stuff yeah we'll do that now hang on i'll, I'll put cool. the um i'll put the thing in the jingly thing in This is London calling. Here is the news. Yes, that's right, folks. The merchandise stuff. So not a great deal of stuff to report, newsworthy stuff to report, other than the fine gentlemen over at DM North with their incredible internet hunty thingy outy skills <laughs> discovered on the WizKids website that there was a load of Dice Masters related merchandise hanging out in the clothing section. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find anything on that website. Sorry, Jimmy, but the website is really. I mean, maybe it's just my age, but I can barely find an article on on Dice Masters on there. But yeah, Laurie from DM North has found this page with loads of Dice Masters match I didn't even know existed. Hmm. Yeah, in fact, you know those guys over there, Laurie and Matt and CCM 007 seems to have quite a talent for for digging up uh, random like dark web secrets about dice masters they always seem to be like right on top of solicitations and release dates and weird web pages that are buried deep in the win and stuff i'm i'm suitably impressed by their by their nerd talents they must be young uh and spry it's because it's the because they can't go outdoors <laughs> Yeah, so you go when you've got snow up to the second story of your house. <laughs> yeah. The only thing you can do is check every single page on the website. It's route around in the in the in the intertwebs. Yeah. So well done, gentlemen, and hello. Good evening to you. Yeah, so the merchandise looks curious. <laughs> yeah, that's one way of putting it. I quite like it. I'm not sure I'd sp- I don't I can't be bothered to do the, the conversion, but eighteen dollars for a bag that looks like a shopping bag seems a touch on the high side. But then the, some of the t shirts look quite cool. I quite like the mug because it's got a little sidekick dice on it. Oh I didn't okay. notice the mug. I didn't see that. Uh, I saw the t shirts and the tote bag, you know, which is obviously very uh, very useful in this day and age because we should all be endeavouring to reduce our plastic usage, of course. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we don't want these, um, what are they called? Nerdles. Is it nerdles they're called? The little bits of plastic that are in the water? Huh? I, I, mate, I just pay my 5p, get a bag. Oh, dude, that's not good. That's not good. Can't dictate to me what I use to carry my shopping. The, uh, the hashtag competitive wife should be all over this, man. Yeah? Yeah, you're killing us all with your nerdles. <laughs> I went out and did a beach clean once and picked up a load of plastic. You'd be surprised what you find on those beaches. <laughs> oh, mate, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, it was not plastic. Yeah, it was uh, not fun. Uh, but in any case, yeah. So the t- there's quite a few t-shirts. I noticed some commentary around the merchandise. Apparently, the psychic dice that are pictured on the t-shirts are, are inaccurate. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see what they are. There's one that's plainly supposed to be Gambit because it's the brown with the pink you've got hulk one's obviously wolverine one's captain america then you've got an orange uh, basic action dice what's all that again 
OCD go mental for that one. But then was it our man Zach from James and Zach that pointed out that the dice on the Dice Masters logo itself is wrong? Uh, it may well have been, yes. It may well have been. Uh, that reminds me, actually, did we ever talk about the black psychic dice that they advertised a little while ago? No, we didn't. Oh, we can add that bit into the news. Yeah, we'll chuck that, that in. Cool. Although that's, that's old news now, but we'll throw it into this community focus. Yeah, they okay. look super cool. I'm very curious to know what set they're coming in. I'm going to make a prediction that they are in the Justice League box. Yeah, do you think? I kind of feel like they're sort of dark uh, x men so, yeah, I think it matches the artwork. Uh, is it Alex Ross? Yes, yeah, yeah. Give it just uh, something with a, a little bit of special pop. Although I was thinking everyone's like going mental over them, saying, oh, these psychic dice are so cool, but everyone's going to be using them. So, which will make the white ones cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Old so. school, retro, innit? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, I use a, a grey set from one of the collector's boxes. Although I couldn't tell you which collector's box it is. Uh, my ones are like an offy, off whitey, grey, beigey type colour. Bone. Is that what they are? Is that what they're supposed to be? I've no idea. I was just throwing out off whitey colour suggestions. Ivory. Faded. Eggshell. <laughs> Eggshell. That's a good word. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested in owning a Dice Masters related official merchandise t shirt, then head on over to. What's the webpage we got open? It is uh, shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash whizkids. That's it. Okay, that went well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it a delivery that did it? <laughs> yeah, really convincing. If you go to the, um, uh, I don't know if you guys are signed up to the WizKids Insider News email, but it was on, it was on there. Ah, uh, was it? Yeah. Uh, I only go with what DM North tells me. Yeah. Although I, I like uh, others went straight to the convention exclusives in the hope that there might be some cool promos for sale, and it was all hero clicks. Oh. Yeah. There's a cool. T- there's the, the hoodie which has got live fast dice hard oh I like that one yeah that's pretty cool we do dice hard dice hard with a vengeance <laughs> dice harder <laughs> dice hard 4.0 <laughs> oh I need to get that jumper I want it every year do you know the one sorry this is way off topic about the, the, the die hard one ho 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 now I have a machine gun oh yeah yeah Every year I see it crop up on one of these merch sites and it's like far too expensive to spend on a jumper. Mm. But um, I've always wanted it. What a great movie, though. Such a, it's a good Christmas movie. I always watch it when I'm wrapping the presents. Oh, yeah, nice, yeah, because it's set on Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's the ultimate Christmas movie. And then you go on to the second one because that's a Christmas movie as well. Yeah, I'm not into the second one so much. That's the one at the airport, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's good. I like the third one with Samuel L. Jackson, though. Yeah, that's that's the best one. The second one's good, though. I had a copy that I'd recorded off of ITV for ages, um, <laughs> and, and then I just kind of paused it on the adverts. Uh, but they dubbed all the, the swearing. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but they dubbed it and added stuff in. yippee so, ki yay Kimo Sabi. Kimo Sabi, that's it, yeah. <laughs> um, they had plastic explosives, and uh, it was plastic explosives in the mother's arm instead of <laughs> the other mother word that could be used. <laughs> and just, so when I was growing up, like that's what I just thought that they said. And then my eyes were open when I bought my own VHS copy. And I was like, oh, they're saying naughty words in this. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and, then H- and then HBO came along and changed everything. Yeah, that's crazy. Yippee-ki-yay, you came up savvy. Kimasabi, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny that you've obviously recorded it off of the telly. Yeah, right? well, it was it's just one of those things. I bet there's quite a few UK listeners who <laughs> have a recollection of that. <laughs> she stained fenster. Huh? Shoot the glass. <laughs> <laughs> what a film. Yeah, what a great movie. I, wanna, I, I might go and watch it. Oh, yeah, it's not Christmas quite yet. Leave it to the rep in. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that this year, sure. Yeah, because Mrs. always gets kind of a sniffles or cold or something or gets tired when uh, we have to do the wrapping and I end up with this big pile of presents and wrapping paper. Yeah, my, my Mrs. usually goes for, like, the cheesy stuff, you know, Love Actually or Miracle on 34th Street or something. So I'll start the work now and warm up the waters for for wrapping night. And wrapping that boat... And that, folks, concludes this week's community focus. (laughs) (laughs) Yippee-ki-yay, (laughs) Kimo Well, 
Welcome back, ladies and gents. And for this next segment now, we want to have a little bit of conversation about the Ministry of Dice Presents Dice Masters events. Regular listeners will know that Andy and I like to run events across the UK. Uh, there's, there's a few things to talk about with regards to the tournaments that we put on but this one the most recent one we held was a little bit different and particularly special because it took place at a fundraising event again i keep wanting to say event a fundraising extravaganza that took place in southampton in partnership with the guys over at gaming versus cancer which is a, a charity foundation that raises money for cancer research uk so it took place on the 10th of november we oh, help me out man Okay. Yeah, so it was 10th of November. It started nice and early at half past 10. We did six rounds of Swiss. Uh, Ministry of Dice presents Dice Masters. Way of doing things is that we don't have any top cuts. So if you turn up for a day of gaming, you get a day of gaming. Whether you're good, whether you're crap, doesn't matter. You're going to get some games in. So we did that. It was uh, golden global <laughs> global escalation. Uh, so we saw a a, a, a really nice variety of teams and Cree captain on quite a few of them but other than that they were quite, <laughs> quite a variety so it was really nice to see uh, people trying out some different combos different combinations of old and new we had a boat ton of prizes as well yes absolutely so let's talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, and then we've got some uh, live audio that we took on the day to share with you so let's focus on that swiss all day thing for a start man so we very much are of the opinion that if you yeah if you travel if you rock up to take place in an event the the last thing that anybody wants is a bit of a miserable time because they're not playing very well or the team's not great or or the roles just don't go in their favor and then you kind of get to a top cut top cut happens and then for the remainder of the day you, you know you break away to a side of Event or you or you just get in your car and go home as andy says we like to have people playing all day long yeah, if you're going to make the the effort to travel to an event then you should at least be able to compete all day and that that's what we what we let you do yeah absolutely it sends the the pairings all a bit shonky you know because we're obviously playing more rounds than you would normally do with the number of players that you get but do you know what who cares who cares yeah who cares? So you get to play a great variety of people with a great variety of teams as well. And it might mean you get paired up um, a little bit like paired down or paired up in a way that is not ideal, but you get to do loads of rolling, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose with, with the community, we're very lucky with the community we've got because if you've got good players, we, we don't seem to have the players that will smash face and make you feel terrible about it. I certainly, I witnessed Paul Forward, who is a very accomplished player, came second a few years ago in nationals. And um, he was playing with Alex, which is, he was a relatively new player to the game. Uh, and he was like talking through kind of different ways of, of Alex being able to kind of play his team and, and, and helping him out. And that was whilst in the tournament. So it was really nice to see. Uh, and I think very common when we play Dice Masters that you've got the people that aren't going to stomp you and, and kind of spit in your face. But, uh, you know, people are there to have fun and play game. We want to build this community and, and helping new players to develop is a way of doing that. Yeah, I entirely agree. It, uh, it, it's nice to see the more experienced players meeting up with, with newer players. I, I mean, Alex specifically, I'm sure he won't mind us sharing, is a kitchen table player, plays at home. I, I think I overheard him saying he plays, uh, just him and his girlfriend get together and you know just, just play on the kitchen table. But we because we were local to him um, and there weren't many events taking place locally traditionally for him, he thought he'd rock along and I believe he had a good time. I hope so. I've got a lovely yeah. spoon. Yeah, the uh, the Ministry of Dice Wooden Spoon, uh, which uh, actually leads me neatly into another point that I, I wanted to make. In the a Ministry of, of Dice Presents event, we, we do something a little bit different with the prize pool as well. So we have the True Mr. Six Mystery Box. The Mystery Box is driven by a raffle that takes place at the end of the event. Every game won, that's not every round, every game, every game won earns you a raffle ticket. And then at the end of the day, we all get together for a prize giving. You draw your raffle tickets out of the box and the, the raffle ticket will correspond with usually a tremendous prize that we've managed to rustle up. Um, so even if you are having a bit of a shaky day and things aren't going so well, you may lose round after round after round, but if you can pull a couple of game wins out during those rounds, you know, playing best of three, then you're usually walking away with a little bit of swag. Uh, and then we put a little bit of something extra on for the first place, the second place, the fellowship, and we have then also the highly coveted Ministry of Dice 
wooden spoon. Yeah, I mean, for example, I mean, I think Alex went home with a spoon. He also went home with a shiny Nocturne, which was prize for kind of top cut at nationals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's pretty decent. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, we like to get some prizes together. It's not difficult to rustle up some cool stuff. Players, uh, particularly this time around, because it was a charitable event, generously donated excess promos and dice masters various bits of dice masters bling um that they can use but even if it wasn't a charitable event and we weren't using donations andy and i go on these extraordinary missions across town centers and the interwebs to source interesting items both dice masters related and just general kind of superhero merchandise and turtles merchandise and Yu-Gi-Oh merchandise etc etc and to make sure that there's some cool and fun stuff to walk away with Speaking of which, just to talk about the fact that the, the prizes were driven by donations this time. So because it was a charitable event and we were raising money for the gaming versus cancer, we received some very generous prizing gifts uh, this time around to give away. So I think we need to just take a moment to a shout out to and a thank you to those who who, who fired some stuff over to us for no charge at all. So uh, thanks to Element Games, my local store. Yeah, absolutely. Those guys had uh, no no horse in this race at all. They just pitched in because they're they're friendly with me. I'm a regular there, and they wanted to help out, so they threw some team packs in, some boosters, um, some gift vouchers for their web store, which I thought was very generous. And they supported the event with stationery. <laughs> they did, yeah. There's element, element Games pens everywhere and sweets as well. Did I see a load of boiled sweets with Element Games written on it? You did, most certainly. And uh, regulars at Element Games, the sweets are often a subject to debate because debate, they regularly change the flavour and do polls on their Facebook page as to what the next <laughs> flavour should be. Uh, so thanks to the guys at Element Games, particularly Matt. Cheers, cheers mate. Also, Level Up Games, uh, again, uh, an incredibly generous donation from those guys. We had some starter sets, some boosters, and some team packs that they chucked in. So uh, very gratefully received. Uh, some of the newer players were, were really chuffed to get their hands on some harder to harder to find older boosters and such like. Mm. Our friends over at uh, Dice Masters with James and Zach chucked a few bits and bobs in. So we had some promos that they generously provided. Uh, and Zach also uh, has his, uh, his um, 3D laser cutting printing thing that's not accurate but you know what i mean uh, yeah. his, his etsy store easy laser works and he provided us with some of his products um asmodee themselves the uk distributor chucked some promos in dice mayhem the guys over at dice mayhem gave us some surplus promos too the folks over at the dice coalition they gave us some older uh reserve pool their previous band gave us some reserve pool uh, basic action indicator cards they uh, went down well, didn't they? They most certainly did go down well, yeah, absolutely. Better than our basic action cards, which I was, I was a little disappointed at. <laughs> <laughs> People, What they say is, is worth more when the artist's dead. Yeah, Not- well, for sure, yeah. Yeah, but they seem more excited about the other basic actions. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, uh, DM North, they contributed quite a bit of time helping us set it up. So some of the graphic design that was done on some of the uh, custom-made items that we prepared, which I'll talk about in a second. Jordo over there was very generous with his time um, was. and very patient with our feedback and, <laughs> <laughs> and wants this. So thank you, Jordo. Stuart from Stu.Art. If you go to uh, the thebrickroller6.com, I've got a link to his gallery on Facebook there. He took some blank art cards and did us some tremendous alt oh, art versions. Amazing ones. Yeah, they're incredible, actually. Uh, I'm really pleased with the ones that I picked up. Uh, the folks over at Patriot Games, thanks to those guys. So Patriot Games are uh, the UK's number one provider of custom map printing, and they gave us a custom prize map, which... Jordo over at DM North had designed for us, and they also uh, provided a custom printed dice tray. Some of you folks might have seen them, the ones with the pop studs in the corners there. Um, so th- those were great prizes and very generously received. And then, of course, Darren, our friend over at DZ Dungeon, uh, who we are in partnership with for the Mod Pods for the team and dice carrier, popped a couple of Mod Pods in. And then, of course, we contributed some prizing. We did some basic action cards of our own, some acrylic tokens for life counters and some dice and what else did i put in the wooden spoon of course and then a few bits and bobs out of out of the mystery prize box a few extra bits into the raffle Uh, and let's not forget of course op laser oh of course no yeah they threw in some 
James Bloor's designed dice trays. Yeah, designed to fit in the collector's boxes to increase their their dice capacity. So yeah. thanks to the guys over at OP Laser as well, who um, we've done a little bit of business with in the past ourselves. Yep, I've, I've got a box. Mm, indeed so thanks for your patience there guys but we thought it was really important to point out that they'd helped us out please do head on over to the blog and uh, we've got links to all their all their stuff and we've also got pictures of the prize table so you can take a look there uh, and there was loads of great stuff like i say there was boosters we had zen bins we had graphic novels we had alt art cards we had shiny promos we had hard to find older promos from the avx and the uxm promo sets that we don't we didn't see much of over here in the uk so yeah the the prize pool with the raffles oh and the pdc of course they provided some stuff and uh, some of their old stock that they're obviously no longer making use of so a big thank you to those guys and then also to charlotte um who is the gaming versus cancer rep who's also a well-known dice masters player who pitched some stuff in there so thanks for your patience but we thought we thought we'd bring that up so so yeah ministry of dice presents events great swag Great teams, interesting formats where you play all day and you get to hang out with an awesome community. Very nice. I think we can skip over the actual day and we'll just move on to the next segment. Uh, no, let's have a little bit of a chat about how the day went then, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so, 10 players in total, which I thought was pretty respectable considering we were at the far southerly coast of the UK. Uh, yeah. There was a number of people who travelled from all sorts of locations over the UK to come and play with us, which we, we were also very grateful for. Uh, as I mentioned before, we played six rounds of Swiss, and we recorded some audio, audio as the day went on. So should we jump into that before we before we talk about the, the way the day concluded? Uh, yes, let's chuck it in now, and yeah. then we can uh, tie up at the end. Cool, let's chuck that if, in now then. If we have to. All right then, folks. Well, here we are then at the Gaming vs. Cancer event taking place at Southampton University in Southampton. Southampton. <laughs> the home, the very home of our own illustrious Andrew England. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, everyone. So we, uh, it's been a bit of a hectic morning. We, we arrived and then had a mad rush to get all the prize in all sorted out and get our raffle tickets all tidied up. So we're actually recording this first piece at the end of the first round. How have you got on, Andy? Uh, yeah, I've got a win against Dante. He had a very nice team with Cree Captain and sidekicks and Malekith and that kind of nastiness but managed to uh, eke my way to victory quite happy with that yeah very good I love the uh, villain teams I'm using Malekith myself today uh, we've got a decent turnout 10 players so uh, a little shorter than expected but you know it is what it is just the entry tickets alone will have put roughly around 120 quid into the pot for the for the charitable donations there's a good vibe atmosphere's good everybody's all smiling laughing and giggling even those who are losing <laughs> well i wouldn't know about that <laughs> neither would i no yeah so we both won one game up that's two raffle tickets each as well my yes. man yeah to dip into the prize pool uh, so we'll jump back on after the second or third round see how we get on later to give you a little update Yes, folks, we're back, and here we are at the end of round two. We're going to be going into a bit of a lunch break at the moment, but um, we thought we'd jump in and give you a little update. So everything seems to be going pretty well for me. I've just finished round two on a tie, one game apiece with my opponent, Matt Haley. Uh, Andy, how have you been getting on? Uh, second game, uh, Seth took me apart, so I'm a one win and one loss. Uh, yeah, don't really want to say much more than that. <laughs> uh, so not even a not even a raffle ticket in that then. Did he beat you two to one or no two 0 Two 0 Yeah, all right, fair play. So uh, yeah, we're, um, we're we're cracking on. I'm not sure how the field is panning out right now. We'll have to have a look at that. Lots of Cree captain around. Cree captain. Yeah. Lots of Professor X Global about. Lots of Matt Haley talking over us as we. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's also I'm seeing the Avengers ID card about a lot as well. I've, I've, I've seen that and a Serena and an old school patch double damage yeah 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 there's two teams running that yeah so it's uh, it's proving to be an interesting day absolutely yeah we'll be back soon with more updates alright ladies and gents so here we are then at the end of round three uh, what am I on right now I'm on two wins and a tie currently and uh, Mr England where are you uh, two wins and a loss Two wins and a loss. So there's a good chance me and you are going to draw each other now on this next round. Hope so. And these two teams we're playing today, we've played against them a fair number of times, haven't we? We have, we have, and it's uh, it's 50-50, so it could be anyone's game. Could go either way. But I'm quite pleased to report that I'm top of the leaderboard right now in Swiss. Yeah, who, who have you just beaten? I've just beaten the Central European national champion. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, what can I say? I'm a national champion destroyer. Yeah, I'm coming after you, Ben. You're next. Um, so, yeah, round three. The, the vibe's still pretty good. I think everyone's still enjoying themselves. We had a bit of lunch earlier and a chill out and everyone was chatting and getting caught up. There's not much else to report, I don't think. Has there been any upsets? Uh, no, no, no. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Looking forward to the raffle. Getting my tickets all uh, logged in, ready to uh, win all the prizes. Yeah, that's it. OK, well, we'll be back and let you know how things are going at the end of round four. OK, ladies and gents, well, that's the end of round five. Did we do something between round four? I don't think we recorded no, no, anything between think, no. round four. Forgot. Yeah, we forgot about that. Um, so, in round five, it was quite an epic face-off. It was. Because possibly the, the two most talented, handsome witty competitors of the day just faced off Seth and <laughs> no. 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 so yeah who played just now Andy we just played and who won the round just now Andy you did <laughs> yes indeed although 2-1 you took a two game one. off me yeah absolutely it was close yeah so that puts me now on three wins and two ties and you're on uh, three wins two losses three wins two losses which I Not think bad. Not bad. I know, I think that might put me in pole position though. I might be on for the mat. I might be on for the sexy mat, which I'll be very pleased with actually, because I've sort of it fallen in awesome. love with it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again though, just to reiterate, the atmosphere seems to be still pretty buoyant. I might have had a beer by now as well, which means that, you know, things are going things well. Going well. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So one we'll let you know how it goes in one more round to one go. One more round. And here we are then, folks, at the end of round six and at the conclusion of the Ministry of Dice presents Dice Masters at Gaming versus Cancer. We've got a couple of players still, uh, they're, they're currently just in rounds at time, but it looks like it's a fairly foregone conclusion right now, isn't it, Mr. England? It does look like you've won, mate. It does indeed look like I've won the event. I can't believe it. I'm so amazing. Aren't I amazing? I just hope that the wind system does something funny and loses now and then it'll be hilarious. Um, well, that's not out of the realms of possibility with the wind. Let's face facts. Yeah, um, never trust the wind system. Never trust the wind system. So, yeah, I've gone um, out of the six rounds we've played, as promised, play, um, Swiss rounds, playing Dice Masters all day. All day. All day. Um, I've gone four wins and two ties. Nice. Yeah, and I think the next closest competitor, even with those still playing, will be... Th- what was it four wins a tie and a loss yes so that should give me the edge um, Central European national champion Andy Spug yeah who I, who I took down with relative ease let's, let's relative ease yeah relative ease yeah yeah. I just um, I just rolled like a boss <laughs> <laughs> so we got the raffle to give out once everyone's finished off get everyone some tickets find out who is actually the winner second place and obviously fellowship and we'll give all the prizes out there. Yeah, then. absolutely, because you come to a Ministry of Dice Presents Dice Masters event, everybody gets some swag to take home. Uh, it's been a tremendous event, supporting a wonderful cause. Actually, we should see if we can pin Phil down for two minutes and get him to talk about yeah, what we're we'll actually do the for. prizes and then see if we can find yeah, it. Yeah, we'll see. What, so, hang fire. You might get that, you might not. Let's see what happens in a minute. You can probably also tell I've had a couple of beers. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> I'm chuddering. Yes, so there we go, folks. I hope you're all giving me an enormous round of applause right now. Um, I think the Gaming vs. Cancer 2018 champion is possibly an even more prestigious title than UK National Champion. I'm not quite sure what what to say to that. Well, I'm sure. I'll I'll run with it if you want. Yeah, I'm certain the audience will agree. You know, let us know. Drop us a note on Facebook or something. But I think the Gaming vs. Cancer uk champion 2018 is is more prestigious it certainly rolls off the tongue yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but um you know all joking aside uh, andy and i after we'd been in correspondence with gaming versus cancer and the decision was made to support them and get their dice masters event off the ground andy and i decided that we we wanted to compete um so we we bought you know, tickets and, and got involved so our grateful thanks to charlotte who didn't purchase a ticket and uh, acted as a player to uh, and therefore didn't take any prizes at the end of the day so me and andy could get stuck in and pick up some of the prizes for ourselves um in some way I, i'm not going to lie to anybody in some way i'm kind of pleased that i managed to hit the top spot so because as the day went on i was looking at the mat and going i really want that custom map <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> it's plastered with Ministry of Dice you know 
symbols and logos and stuff. So it's like it, it was like karmic. It was fated to be, I think, that one of us won the map, and clearly it was going to be me. Oh yeah, obviously. <laughs> well, that's because you talked me out of playing Ultraman. Well, yeah, sure, and you know, you you could absolutely have turned up with Ultraman and probably swept up. Yeah, but where the where the fun of that have been other than for me? Well, exactly, yeah, and I think, um, well, I'm I'm pretty convinced that actually the whole Ultraman thing was just your uh, attempt to wind me up and troll me. Mm, no, I was going to play him. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, you're that guy. <laughs> that guy. No, it was fun. I mean, the teams, the team lists are up, but it was a nice mix, wasn't it? No one went in with the full bore smash face fix it or Ultramans, but then maybe people were teching against it and that they're trying to try something different but i think there's a scope there's a scope with global escalation that you can you can do that so many cards i mean no team was like easy pickings was it i mean everyone had good solid teams we didn't have any of those guys there with the uh, full ball nastiness yeah i agree so uh, i think it's kind of understood listeners of the podcast people interact with us on facebook over here in the uk get the sense i've certainly made it very well known that i'm i'm about the i don't know what the word is the more casual way of approaching the game uh, if that's the right terminology Uh, i prefer to for us to mess around in the one and a half tier or the second tier kind of team lists where it is anybody's game for the taking Um, and i'll be the first to admit absolutely that even though i came top spot it it could have gone any way for me at a number of instances not a single person was uh, even close to a walkover every uh, everyone you know that there was a dice roll in it or um, i mean thinking about our our matchup for example mate i was you drew your bag out you had that madam web <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have rolled that madam web in our first game was it or our third game our third game it, yeah if you'd have rolled that madam web you'd have won that round you know hands down you you whiffed it and so i was able to recover and come back the next turn and you know get get my business done uh, i think also uh, to, in defense of so spug i played spug same again man spug was missing rolls left right and center he bought up his nobbies because he clearly identified that i was playing a villain team and that actually nobbies are pretty <laughs> pretty solid way to go in that situation but could he roll those nobbies not for his life you know what i mean just fist after fist after fist and he did great he, you know he'd be record he he he's a canny player. There's no two ways about it, and he did great stuff, <laughs> in spite of the fact he was whipping his dice. But he just wasn't dealing me the damage, you know. Matt Haley as well. well me and Matt went one game apiece, and there was one round in particular that Matt was had a Ronin. I was playing a direct damage team. Ronin would have been a boon for him at a particular moment uh, in our second match. Um, or was it our first match? In our first match, but he just didn't roll the round in, and I was able to then deliver damage the next turn. So yeah, even though we, like you say, there was, nobody was beholdering it, nobody was ultramaning it, you know, nobody had those really minging power teams. Everybody still, still put in, I don't know, a fair showing. You know, it wasn't like it was. They, they were walkovers or or no, walk, no, you know. they're, they're all kind of well thought out, put together teams. Yeah, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed yeah. then there was a lot of cut and thrust back and forth. The game could go anywhere at any moment. Really interesting, janky combos taking place. Real kind of Johnny spirit to it all. And I think that's what, well, less so you maybe, but that's certainly what I'm all about. And that's kind of what we've set the MOD Presents events to be all about. Yeah. Yeah. There was one great combo that uh, Stu, Stu was playing, which was the Thor. Uh, not the Thor, sorry. The Thanos that does the villain's attack value in damage when it's fielded. Do you know the one? Yeah. yeah, you collect for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was collecting villains in uh, with big attacks. He was doing some cool stuff with the Kree Captain in combination with that. It just turned out that the eight cost purchase to get the Thanos out to get things rolling was just a slightly, slightly too high for him to really drive it through. But because of the types of teams he was playing... He was put in a position where he could give it a good go and he could get a few shots off and, and still feel like he's in the game, you know. Uh, equally, like, you know, when we play tested your Ultraman against my team, it was just, an, it, I was just annihilated. Mm. You know, I was questioning everything. <laughs> my existence, the meaning of life. 
<laughs> you know, because I was really ill-equipped to deal with it. But in the in the kind of second tier manner in which we played, everybody, you know, it was back yeah. and forth, and people were buying interesting dice and getting into it, and you know, you weren't having to rush things in a way that you know, oh no, I'm about to get battered in the third turn. You know, I don't know, maybe am I right? Am I talking rubbish? No, no, it was good. It was good. It was really very much in the theme of what we wanted. So. Uh, I was very proud and very humbled with how it went. Yeah, great. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get this segment wrapped up because it's ticking on a bit. But anything else to say on that one, uh, Andy? No, I think we covered that. So thanks very much for Gaming vs Cancer for allowing us to put our event on. Uh, we hope we've uh, contributed well and supported the fundraising. Um, uh, I heard from the guys over there that they'll be publishing their final figure soon enough, so we'll get a sense of how much the event overall has raised. And UK players, keep your eyes and ears open. We'll be back with another Ministry of Dice Presents event in the new year. Woo. Woohoo! Welcome back, folks. So for this next segment now, uh, we're going to have another one of our patented format discussions, which I believe, Andy, you've come up with a name for recently. It's time for Format Focus. Format Focus. Have you done Is the jingle ready for this now? It's not ready now. It might be by the time this is released, though. All right. Well, folks, there might be a jingle right now. There might not. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, okay, so format focus. So um, a couple of episodes ago, Andy and I were taking a close look at the global escalation format. Our inspiration for that was that Central European Nationals at the time was running a global escalation format, and we were planning on using it, as we've just said, with the Gaming versus Cancer event. But in our, we had a chat in our last episode about worlds, and something that caught our eye, and we thought we'd have a closer look at, was the 10 in 10 format that's being put on as a side event at PAX Unplugged, which I believe is in the Pennsylvania stroke Philadelphia Convention Center. <laughs> One of the two. One of the two, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Andy, would you like to share with our dear listeners what the 10 in 10 format's all about? I'll have a go. Um, <laughs> to be honest, there's not a massive amount of information, but um, uh, let me have a dig. So players will play a modern constructed format where each card on their team must be from a different set. Promos count as one set. So basically, you need to pick a team. Each card has to come from a different set. It's modern, so that's Batman forward, uh, I think. Sounds right so to me. Batman, yeah. Batman onwards. Should have probably prepared to know how many that is, but I haven't. <laughs> um, I'm guessing the old team packs count as a separate set. So I'm not sure there's actually ten. But you pick one of each. Make a team. Have at it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, you're right. Information is a bit thin on the ground, especially considering it's a, a side event at uh, Pax Unplugged, which is, well, by the time, when the, when as we're recording, it's um, it's about two weeks away, but by the time this episode goes out, uh, it'll, it'll just be around the corner. Uh, and good luck to everyone who's competing, of course. But so information is a bit thin on the ground, so we've had to do a bit of guesswork around, well, is a team pack considered a separate, uh, entity in the 10 in 10 and then releases like avengers infinity well are uh, the Cree invasion and the justice like lightning is that three pulls for you towards your 10 or is that one because it's like a combined release i often think about the three of those as a as a kind of combined unit so we've had to do a little bit of guesswork in terms of how we've approached it and stuff but it's certainly a curious format it is uh it's, it's blinking hard to put a team together as well isn't it yeah, so uh, one of the things we've done, as we did with Global Escalation, is we start doing a bit of team building. We'll do a bit of play testing in the coming weeks to see what we can rustle up. But I think, um, you know, once you've identified your win condition or, or found something that you want to build around, your, your usual go-to pieces aren't there to just kind of reach out and grab for you have to sort of seek alternatives in another set to do the function that you want it to do which i found very difficult to move my way around so uh, ramp for example i was looking at ramp for the team that that i've been tinkering around with for me and andy to play test and i was like oh man I, like if i put spot investigation in it well that that takes up my my guardians of the galaxy and my mighty thor slots up in one you know gone and that then eliminates others that I think might be a good fit for my team. So what's my alternative? Yeah. And I really wanted a Madam Mask on my team. So then I took I couldn't have Madam Mask 
because I'd put Spot in. So then I was like, oh, maybe Wonder Woman would be an alternative, but she's like a bit more expensive and harder to field. And oh, wouldn't it be great if I could have a Steve Trevor? But I can't have a Steve Trevor to get my Wonder Woman for cheaper because that's then t- I can't have two slots from the Superman Wonder Woman set. So yeah, it's 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 actually a really challenging format to build effective teams around which may be off-putting for some but I actually think it could be a good thing in terms of placing people in positions to find re- a really interesting meta within. Yeah, yeah, it's got potential. It's, it's, I think it's one of those things that, I know they're running it as a side event, but it's something that you you have to start with an idea and kind of let it grow as you play test it and think actually, do you know what, I might have picked this card from X-Men First Class and it might be good, but I really need this other one. So I need to switch it around. So if I'm doing that, and then so you could end up, yeah, it's a real team beer winning challenge, let alone actually playing the game. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so uh, I don't, I'll talk a little bit maybe about the team that I've been thinking around with, and we can do an update in a, in a future episode. But uh, a card that caught my eye uh, some time ago, I may have even mentioned this, was uh, Black Panther, the Orphan King from the Avengers Infinity Box. The Black Panther, his game text reads, Black Panther cannot be blocked by villain character dice or sidekick character dice. And I've had just a little seed of an idea in the back of my head to pair it up with the rare Danger Room from X-Men First Class, the one that makes all character dice villains. So I thought, okay, well that works, because that's two different sets, Avengers Infinity and an X-Men First Class, so I've got, I've got a starting point there. But then, in Avengers Infinity, I wanted, I was like, oh, I kind of want the Black Widow Force attacks, but I can't have it. Oh, and wouldn't the Avengers ID card be really nice to make him you know, really even more painful if he's going through unblockable? So then I had to kind of source more creative ways of increasing the damage potential or like and ramp as well because he's a five cost. So it, yeah, really interesting. But that, that's kind of what what I'm planning on tinkering around with and playing with. I'm going to try and make an unblockable Black Panther using Danger Room to make all my opponents' cards villains get off the ground. Nice. Mm. My one, the, what I've started with is, a, is to build around was, and it's a bit of an odd one, but it's this songbird from the Justice Like Lightning team pack, the two cost shifting alliances. She's flip card, one side she's blank, but on the other side she's intimidate. So she's a two cost intimidator, yeah. which means you know you fit when fielded, take something away for that turn, uh, which the more I've been thinking about it, the better it could be because you could field it to get rid of a rare blob so then you can field other characters uh you could field it to get rid of a shriek because shrieks around again mm, yeah to then kind of you know unblank things and cause uh all sorts of uh, shenanigans that way so i think there's something around it especially where it's so cheap you can get it out pretty quick and try and that with a ko mechanic to keep her cycling a little bit like the kind of elf thief from days gone past Sure. So I've built a team kind of around that with loads of cards that are a bit pants, but we'll see how it gets on and see what I can change in and out from there. Well, that's it. And like you say, you know, we're going to, like we did with Global Escalation, a bit of playfulness. Although the irony with Global Escalation, of course, is when it came to the the Ministry of Dice Presents event that we played at, which was Global Escalation, neither of us actually ended up playing the team (laughs) that that we'd been discussing in our previous, what we're calling it, format Feature. Format focus. Focus. Format focus. <laughs> Which is ironic, I suppose, but it, it helped our understanding of the format. Yeah, Shriek's back in, in with it being a modern format that yeah. have a ban list. Um, I have got kind of somewhat comfortable with the absence of blanking mechanics because Global Escalation, yeah. of course, you know, your Dwarf Wizards and your Shrieks of the World aren't up in your grill. Your auntie's back, but you can't pseudo dragon. No, yeah, that's right. Uh, which is interesting in itself. Um, it, it also eliminates um, other interesting kind of pairings. I noticed when I was trying to find decent win, con- <laughs> win conditions. <laughs> uh, other little things like Mimic Ramps out the window, because Mimic, oh, yeah. P- Mimic and PHG both exist. They're both X-Men First Class cards. Yeah, and Jubilee. Yes, and Jubilee, yeah. So um, that was something I noticed. But yeah, Shriek's back, which pains, pains me somewhat. Obviously, then you have to dedicate some energy and thought into how you might deal with her yeah because my black panther is definitely definitely vulnerable to to that stupid card yeah so um we thought we'd have a play around with the uh, the 10 in 10 
uh, and we'll kind of keep you updated a little bit like we did with global escalation yeah gold golden escalation i'm just going to call it golden escalation sounds better anyway yeah you do that man that's fine that works i know what you're yeah. talking about do what i want yeah absolutely mod for life bro. <laughs> boom boom yeah uh, okay, cool. So we will return uh, in a future episode to give a little bit of an update as to how our playtesting has gone and what kind of tinkering we've done and uh, do these win conditions work? Is it a viable format for ongoing play? Uh, and, and just kind of let you know how, we, how we've been doing. Yeah, or is it just a pain in the ass? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so watch this space, folks. Come back for more down the line. Andy, uh, after all our griping before about listeners not writing in we've we've actually had a bit of correspondence at the brick roller six towers really yeah absolutely we've had another letter from a from a listener that's good that must be because of the end of the double burst uh one can only assume they've got no one else to to send their correspondence into would you like me to would you like me to read it to you uh, yes please okie dokie here we go then so dear chris and andy first off love the show i'm a big fan I am writing as I have been struggling lately with playing Dice Masters competitively. When I first started playing, I was considered a bit of a big deal. I had lots of comments and praise for my abilities, and I was proud of how I managed to smash face consistently. I have a very aggro style of play and think I'm pretty resilient. Hit me once and I'll hit you back twice as hard. Hit me repeatedly and oh my, I can cause some serious damage. However... The top spot in a modern competitive setting has always eluded me, and I have a feeling that I may not reach my full potential. I can relate to Andy in this way, as I feel like my best years may be already behind me, even in the short time that I have been playing. Oh, hello. Hello, yeah, cheeky. I have recently had great success at the Central European Nationals, but in the modern format I am overshadowed by players more attuned to success. I'm hoping to do well at Worlds this year. I'm also really looking forward to finally meeting Andy there. However, I have a feeling that I may be overshadowed once again. Some have even called me names like Glass Cannon and One Hit Wonder. Anyway, I'll let you know how I get on. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. And again, love the show. All the best, Mr. J. Fix It. Yes, ladies and gents, there we go. That brings us to the end of yet another episode of the Ministry of Dice podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed recording it. Um, I'm not, is there anything we need to call out in the outro now? Uh, not really. Hope you enjoyed hearing about how we got on in uh, Gaming vs. Cancer. Look yes. forward to, well, hope you look forward to the next Ministry of Dice Presents event, which we will be putting together soon. Yeah, we're probably going to line something up early in the new year, hopefully, but... Um, uh, UK players keep your eyes out on the UK Dice Masters Facebook page for info about that probably up north yeah I think I think we will be up north this time round um, start again we'll go north middle or bottom anyway we'll figure all that out in the new year let's get through Christmas first uh, there was something else that occurred to me oh yes come back for updates on how our 10 in 10 exploration goes we'll give you a bit of an update on that in our next episode otherwise i've been chris aka true mr six and i've been andy aka john mclean john mclean yippee kaye kimosabi <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks Mate, I'm all over the f***ing place. This is awful. Can I start again? <laughs> no, bitch. Keep going. Get <laughs> uh, that was dreadful. What? Um, where am I tonight? What's going on? I think what it is is that I'm sat down. Is that what it is?
Mm-hmm. I'm I'm feeling really hot as well because the missus has you know put the radiators on, but not just let's warm the house up. It's a bit cold. She's put it on like, hmm, maybe we can pretend we live in our Barbados. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sweltering. Right. right, third time's the charm, bro. Three is the magic number. Five seconds of silence again. I'm gonna nail it this time. <laughs> Uh, a bit of chat for you about the... No, f*** it, I don't like that. It was getting a bit rambly. Didn't yeah. want to be rude. Yeah, no, I, I could sense it. I knew, I knew, man. I knew. Let me try that again. Five seconds of silence. Uh, oh, bollocks. Hang on. Five seconds of silence again. F***ing lost it. Uh, <laughs> let me start that again.